Hello, my name is Paul McGraw and I'd like to spend a few moments, if I may, discussing the new edition of my book, Commercial Fraud and Civil Practice, published by Oxford University Press. Commercial fraud litigation is a demanding area of practice. It's fast-moving and complex and requires of the practitioner an understanding of a broad range of legal topics, contract, tort and restitution on the one hand, company law and solvency and the conflict of laws on the other. The aim of the book is to try and meet these demands. Where possible, each chapter commences with a summary of the basic elements of the relevant claim or remedy under discussion. This is to enable the reader immediately to identify whether that claim or remedy might be of some interest to them on the facts of their particular case. Thereafter, each chapter delves in detail into the topic and seeks to meet head-on many of the difficult and controversial areas that may arise. Each chapter tries to bring together materials drawn from numerous different sources, including monographs and collections of essays, some of which might not find themselves on a typical practitioner's bookshelf. But these reference materials are essential to the success of the aim of the book, as many areas of law encompassed within the umbrella of commercial fraud litigation have benefited greatly from the contributions and guidance provided by the leading academics. This is no more so to take with two obvious examples than the law relating to constructive trust and restitution. This new edition reflects and discusses the substantial changes in the law which have taken place in the last five years since the publication of the first edition. At Common Law, we've had the controversial Court of Appeal decision in Sinclair and Versailles on the appropriate remedy for the receipt of a bribe. In the Supreme Court, we've had two decisions on lifting the corporate bail, uh, VTB and Nutritec, and Preston and Petrodell. And at first instance, there's been a wholesale series of cases dealing with the development of sanctions for the non-compliance to draconian orders such as freezing orders and Norwich Pharmacal Disclosure Orders. In the conflict of laws, we've had Brussels 1 regulation dealing with jurisdiction, Rome 1 regulation dealing with contractual choice of law, and Rome 2 regulation dealing with non-contractual obligations and choice of law and an express choice of law for unjust enrichment for the first time. Finally, new chapters including sham trusts, contempt of court and lifting the veil have been introduced to reflect their increased importance in this topic. All these and more have necessitated a substantial revision to and enlargement of the original text in the hope of producing a book which is both useful and of interest to all those whose paths cross commercial fraud litigation. Thank you.